All right, hey everyone, it's Chris Shelley, back with more iRacing. This time we're doing ARCA cars at Irwindale Speedway. So here's my qualifying run. I take it... Uh, I had a, little, a bit of an issue running, <laughs> figuring this track out. Um, didn't have that much time to practice, but I got some practice in. It's a fun track to drive. Really challenging. Took a few, <laughs> quite a few laps to get figured out like what the good line is. You're going to run on a high. Um, and there are some little things about this track that I'm going to talk about throughout the race, but run a high, sort of somewhat take a traditional line, except you have to, there's one little thing you have to consider with braking. This setup, it's really loose the rears on corner entry, so you got to be careful of that. But just run that line, that's a good, I feel like that's a good qualifying line. You don't really need to run very high up in the corner, just about where that seam is for qualifying, and you can get those laps down pretty quick and get a good lap. I wouldn't go any higher just because it seems like there's not enough rubber down anywhere further up the track to really make up enough grip. So I would just run that. We got a 263. That was among one of the faster lap times in, that I saw, at least for qualifying. I'm sure there's faster possible, but I got pulled, so I didn't need to go any faster. <laughs> so let's move on to the race here. Here we are for the race. 55 laps. Uh, kind of a long race. 55 laps. It's one of the longer ones we do. It's a, at this half mile. It's quite a bit of distance. It's not super long, but it's a little. It feels long. My strategy is fairly similar to what I normally do, but I'm gonna prioritize track position. So I'm, I can't let anyone pass me, right? It's super hard to pass, and that's usually what happens with the, a lot of these tracks where you're running the high, the high side. It's going to be very difficult to pass. Uh, I think the only way really to make a pass is they make a mistake or you really force a slide job. So that's something to consider this entire race. See, everyone's running the top. But yeah, uh, trying to take it easy on my tires, especially early run, and especially right before they, get, they even get warmed up. Gotta get the tires warmed up first before I do any sort of. Before I get any. Um, go for any aggressive <laughs> lines. And it really helps that I started up front. And I think that's something I've been working on. And I've managed to figure out this for this race here. This qualifying on the pole. It is not the stronger field, as strong as field I expect. Usually I'm not number one in the split. But that's just what happened this time. We'll take that so yeah you can see um my strategy for saving tires not throwing a bunch of wheel in it right i try to be very gentle with the wheel but gentle with the brakes not so gentle with the throttle but a little bit gentle with the throttle this is different this 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 track is different um than a lot of what i felt at other tracks because of how how loose the setup is it's really easy to slide the rear, especially on corner entry. Especially on corner entry. So, yeah, you are sort of rear limited uh, on grip throughout a lot of the corner if you're not, depending on your driving style. That's what at least what I was experiencing. Um, it could be, I don't know if for me running the bottom, I was running a slightly different line. And I say the bottom, right? I'm running that <laughs> around that white line, sometimes dipping under it with my left sides. That's very that's very low in the groove for compared to what all other people are running. Uh, I think there's a bit more banking close closer to the wall, but I didn't like it, especially when I was trying to save tires early on in this run. I did go up there a little bit later. So like I was usually say when you have these multi groove tracks, going higher can be faster, and it's a stronger defensive line, and it just gives you more run down the straight right. Especially as you look at um, trying to keep your speed up as the tires wear out. You know, you're going to want to stay in that, I, you're going to be in that optimal RPM range longer when you run the high side because you're just keeping up more speed. But because you're, you know, ripping through with grip, more grip on the top, you're also wearing the tires more. Which is, a, again, always a trade-off. 
So it was some sort of physical trade-off when you when you're trying to make those uh, running in any certain line. So that's why I like running this. And I wasn't too pressured by the seven car. Like the, the seven car is really up on me, but I, keep in mind I was trying to save tires really for the most part. I think I didn't really start going aggressive until about this lap right here when they started battling. So I noticed they were battling behind me. And I figured, okay, let's go for it. So let me show you my main line that I ran throughout this race. It still wasn't 100% because I knew it was to lap 12 of 55. But this is about the main line. And I'll describe describe my uh, thought process here. So corners are going to be rough. Corner entry is rough because of this one thing. Look how, look where the car goes when you're in the corner. You notice that? It's fault. So the car is sort of, at least in my opinion, and what it seems like is there's some sort of like falling into the corner. And you see the banking's there and you're kind of just dipping. You go into the corner, you're falling down into the banking. You know, a lot of a lot of different tracks have different ways of doing this. Like Bristol, a lot of times you're climbing up the hill, right? If you're especially running the high side, you're climbing up the hill into the track. Here, you're falling down. And what I noticed, I said, is I think that's at least my theory is that that's what's causing this loose on entry condition. You can see I'm fighting it, like my rears are sliding, heading into the corner. And meanwhile, oh yeah, I'm this guy's battling me, right? Like he's giving all he's got, but that's that's what you gotta battle heading into the corner. So my approach to doing it was sort of realizing, okay, the, tr the car is, the track is falling away from me. So I'm going to give it break on the corner entry, lift out, and then you see there's a little bit of more brake pressure later into the entry of the corner. All right, because I, I couldn't get it all slowed down over that hump, right? Your track's uh, the only way you make grip is when your car is in the track. So if your car is less in the track, you make less grip, right? Less, um, less normal force on the car on the tires from the road means that you can't, you know, turn the car as much. You can't accelerate the car as much. You can't slow down, decelerate the car as much. So that's why I'm backing off the brake, but then holding that brake pressure a little bit longer and even bumping it up just a little bit. And that's what helped me sort of not spin out heading into each corner it's just taking it easy over that hump while the car is still falling especially while the rears are still trying to find traction so i do that still gonna do besides from that you're still gonna want to use sort of that braille trail breaking technique and then sort of try to steer it with the gas coming off the corner gotta keep a couple things in mind like the traction circle that's another fundamental thing um, that's why you do trail braking while you're easing back into the gas, because you want to really just keep the tires on the limit the entire time, or at least make the most of the tires and what you have. You don't want to keep them on the limit the whole time because you don't want to, you know, wear out your tires. So we're up 21 and 55. So it sounds like it's a long race, like 55 laps for these Arca cars sounds like a lot, but we're clicking it off pretty quickly. Seven car, you can see him running higher but he's getting up in the wall. And my, another reason I like this this lower line, and I had a, such a tough time wanting to get off of wanting to get off that lower line, is because everyone was running higher. Like I can go back here, let me. Uh it's wrong key. Wrong key. So this guy's running high. This guy's running high. This guy's running high. This guy's running high. High. Hi. Every eight car is the probably the first one we see right back here, just running lower. And I don't even know if he really meant to do that, or he's going. He's doing a little bit of an interesting line. He's sort of late apexing it because of the way the entry, corner entry is. I can see that working as well. But he Come runs on, lower. He runs lower than uh, what everyone else is doing. So he's running lower like me. <laughs> so I would say that's one of the things that really helped me out is being able to just run so much lower save the tires 
And my part of the track that I was using was not heating up as much, right? That's another thing to consider. What might be the ideal line if it's just you by yourself? Uh, with track with track evolution, right? Tire heat throws heat into the car into the track. If there's local heat in that in another lane, or that there's more local heat in the lane that everyone's running, so if you run off that, you're gonna find a little bit more speed because it's you can find a little bit more speed because there'll be a little more grip. Now grip isn't always speed. Sometimes you accept okay, you can make more time in uh <laughs> you can might have to make more time by running that slicker part of the track. But when it's such a close trade-off, you know, this running that lower against that white line is gonna give a little bit, a little bit more advantage. Um, I think you could argue, depending on your driving style and um, you know, how good you are at executing a certain line, how comfortable you are at executing a certain line, you know, uh, maybe running the higher higher would have been better. I think right now, once you get to like this middle half of the race. You can see they're running me down every time I pull away from them. Like they've got, they'll have a battle, but they'll run me down. Um, probably because I'm running the bottom. So, I think even even with all the all things considered, like everyone wanting to run that line, it's also rippering up, which means more. Good. So there's so many conflicting. Um, I mean, really conflicting, but like counteracting physical uh, properties of of the track that are changing that are gonna that you really have to consider and you have to weigh and balance. So while my line is good for saving tires a little bit, running higher, I think, was probably faster. Once I hit about halfway, I probably should have moved up closer to the wall. And I sit sort of lagged on that. Right? My tires are better. And I remember I remember comparing tires with everyone after the race and I was, I was much better on tires, and guess who was second? The second best on tires was that, uh, was it Antonio? Antonio Holland in the eight car. He was also running a lower line as well. So, at least in three and four, he was. He was doing a little diamond, but not a diamond, but late apex. They keep catching me. And they also had this... You also... Honestly, if they worked together somehow, I don't know how that would have worked. They probably could have tried to make a run at me, right? It just never happened. Never happened. I had it too easy. This is And this is why track position is so crucial, right? Not only are you literally, you know, starting off in a better position... But you don't have to battle anybody if you're fast enough. You know? It just favors you. You don't have to battle anybody, which means you save your tires. You save your tires, you're faster. That's how racing works. Racing the race doesn't start with uh the race doesn't start with the green flag of the race. The race starts with the green flag of the qualifying session. So qualify better. Um, especially with these, uh, if you're gonna do these ARCA races, qualify, 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 uh, definitely, you know, these ARCA races without cautions are very predictable. You need to be able to qualify well, and you need to be able to do, uh, a decent long run. If you can qualify well, you don't need to do, the better you qualify, right, like, the, you don't need to be as good in the long run. Especially if you qualify up, like, top two, for at least to qualify first. You don't need to be that good in the long run. You don't need that much pace. Because some, oh, some of these tracks are so hard to pass where, you know, you'll just stay in front. Now, it's not guaranteed. Some Someone's better, just flat out better, and then you're going to get passed. But qualifying is half the battle. Uh, enough of being a qualifying sim. Anyways, I'm out the second. You see those guys back there having a battle of their lives. Three car battle for second. I'm loving this. Look at it. They're banging off of each other, door slamming each other. I'm so happy about this and i think there's an incident that happened right around here that gave me even more advantage let's see what happened so this is what uh you kind of need to do to pass right you need to throw a slide job 
And it's very tough because someone can just cross you over like that. Like, you see this three card gets almost clear. Almost clear. The, the seven didn't almost wall ride. Which, <laughs> which honestly, mm, I don't know if that's allowed. <laughs> get leaned in the wall a little bit on purpose to get... <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Nah, nah, I'm not going to accuse him of laying it on purpose. And the three card just comes. That's what happened. Three card sends him in a turn one. Turn one and uh, a bunch do it, both do a bunch of drifting. Three card then dose for another dive. I don't know what he thinks this is going to work. Bang. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to work. That's not going to stick. So three card goes back. Seven card is lit up his rear tires the rear tires normally are probably supposed to be like 260 probably i've, I've added a short track maybe 260 270 and those must have been like 350 men <laughs> i'm exaggerating partially partially not really but lit up his tires you don't want to do that don't lit up your tires don't slide your tires don't ever ruin the heat because that's just going to make your balance even worse tire your tire grip is based on tire heat and tire wear you do battles like that and you get sloppy it's just gonna it's just gonna make you slower. Don't get sloppy when you're when you're racing somebody. If you can avoid it. You guys if you got any amount of time left in the race, don't get sloppy when you're doing stuff like that. It's not gonna help you. Not to not to mention you're just gonna piss people off because you're gonna much more likely gonna, gonna ram into them. So this is uh me trying out a few different lines. I see like, okay, well, I've got a three second lead, ten laps to go. Like, literally unless I throw it into that tire bearer and ear into turn one, I got the win. So I'm trying a different line. I try out higher. And I think I was able to get some of those fast laps. So I show I show y'all some of these lines towards the end of the race. So entering higher, I kind of give it like a very straight entry. Let the car, let the track sort of carry me through the corner. I, now I'm not 100% sure. It, to me, it feels like there's a little bit more banking up there. Very high, in that very high line right against the wall. And I think the since marbles are automatically being clean, right? You don't have to worry about losing grip because of marbles right up in dust and dirt right up against the wall. So very uh, I think it's stronger on the up high. So if we're gonna compare lap time as you see in the top left. This one is a two oh six. Let's see that with the two car clocks in a one six one. But I'm still fighting loose condition. Which, you know, sometimes is good. Right? Uh, I really like that at Speedways. And most of these most of these cars, right? Uh, Arca car. And then once you... Especially when you're looking at, like, the truck. And to some degree, Xfinity. Not as much, but some degree, Xfinity. You want to get that right rear out. Because it's like... The aero, aerodynamically, you have so much side force. You have the tendency for it to straighten the car out. So you, it's honestly just... Physically, that's... Diet, like, for from a dynamics perspective, physical dynamics perspective, that's ideal. These short tracks, I don't know about that. <laughs> um, you gotta get it to rotate, right? You're never gonna be able to turn the car when it's straight. Physically, it's not possible to turn the car when it's straight with how the wheels work. <laughs> but, something to consider. So here we go, running 195 that lap. But I was still struggling with loose condition. Uh, you may have noticed I ran basically... I think I actually did run a default brake bias. Usually I lower it down. I ran in default this time. It's way too loose in corner entry. So kind of running high. Here I tried it again. And I have to coast a million... <laughs> I have to coast forever because I literally just was not catching the rear. I didn't, I didn't like how it feels. Uh, that might have been fast. It might have been a fast way to do is pick up the throttle and try to save it. There's no need for me to try and challenge that. <laughs> Uh, I definitely think with more practice, if I were to do this race again, I'll practice again, trying that high side, especially in those longer runs. I did what I needed to do before this ra the race started. The important, most important part of this race, you saw, and that was in that first minute and a half where I did qualifying. So, that's not... <laughs> I said I was going to stop simping for qualifying, but I just did it again. That's fine. We take the win. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm... I had a lot of fun with this race. Had a fun, lot of fun um, running it. Fortunately, this I this uploaded. Per, it's gonna be essentially it's after the week is when I'm not uploading this, so. Uh, 
you won't be able to use it for this week, <laughs> but you'll be able to look at it for, uh, for upcoming seasons. If you're com coming back to this, if you're seeing this in the future. Um, <laughs> but there's also some good concepts and I think good lessons. Plus, it was a good fun race. I uh, had a few funny moments. Those guys battling hard for a second. So, all in all, it was good fun. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Shelley. Uh, please like and subscribe for more. Uh, season 4 I is about to wrap up soon, so it's been it's been fun and hope to continue doing this in the future. Alright. Please like and subscribe for more. See you guys later.